Hey guys, it's Domestic Chris here and I am going to um, open up my heart and share something with you that's happened to me in the last uh, month. So, um, where to start? Uh, back it way up and say that um, my very first pregnancy ever was a miscarriage in 2007. Um, it was something called blighted ovum where the sac started to grow, but nothing came inside it. And I guess a little FYI, <laughs> this is going to be a little bit um, of a different video than I normally film. So um, maybe not totally appropriate for little people, um, probably TMI. So um, if you don't want to watch, now's a good time to go. But so um, my husband and I were both in the military then. Um, it was really sad to have our first ever pregnancy dreams be um, sort of shattered. I don't feel like the Lord took my baby away. I know that um, he's waiting for us in heaven. Um, but so we had a miscarriage then. And then we went on birth control during our deployment. And then we were able to conceive and carry full term our oldest daughter. And she was born in 2009. And then very shortly after that, <laughs> we got pregnant again with our second daughter and she was born in 2011. After her birth, um, I had a Marina IUD put in place uh, and I had that one in place for just about one year. I had it put in place in Korea and then I had it taken out um, after one year because it wasn't in place right. And then I had another one put in place and no problems and had that in for a long time got that taken out in August on the um, solar eclipse day <laughs> um, in hopes of having a cruise baby. Didn't have a cruise baby, didn't have a pigeon forge baby, <laughs> didn't have any babies. But in January um, 10th, I got a positive pregnancy test on a Wednesday and we were really excited. The next day I told my husband because I wanted to check again. It was just a Dollar Tree test and I did another one. It was positive. Then in the afternoon I got a positive on a digital and so we, I shared it with him. Then we shared it with our children and then we started sharing with our closest family members. Well, Friday night when I went to work um, as a nurse, I started having um, a sharp pain. Uh, it only lasted about a minute and then it went away and I just chalked it up to, you know, oh, this old uterus doesn't know what to do. <laughs> it's just stretching and it'll be okay. But then um, closer to 3.30 in the morning, I started having that same pain again, but it wasn't subsiding and it was accompanied with bleeding. No clots, just blood. Um, I told the girls that I was working with, I was terribly sorry, but I was going to have to go down to the emergency room. I did that. They took blood work, um, urine samples, did a vaginal ultrasound, which of course they wouldn't let me see. And when they came back, they said, well, your HCG levels are right on par for four weeks of pregnancy. Um, we can't really see anything other than the bleeding in your um, uterus. So follow up with your OB. Um, at this point in pregnancy, we probably wouldn't see much. Take it easy. So I told work, because I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that I wasn't going to be coming back Saturday and Sunday night. And then I'd be following up with my doctor and letting them know. So I follow up with my doctor on the Monday after, after just totally putting myself on bed rest. Um, the bleeding had subsided before I left the ER and the pain had gone away. They didn't give me any pain medication, just hot backs. And uh, I just banished myself to the couch and you know my sister came over and fixed grilled cheese for dinner <laughs> and just really was very conscious I didn't go upstairs except for you know the one time to go to bed and the one time to come down in the morning um really just took it very easy then I went and had labs drawn on Monday um and was going to have follow-up labs on Wednesday on Tuesday afternoon, um, again, still taking it easy, but we did have an appointment to go to. Uh, I started bleeding again, not near as heavy cramps. And the bleeding, we're talking here, it's not profuse. I mean, it's more than spotting, but it's not like filling a pad an hour, which is the concern, right? Um, then the bleeding stopped after two hours. I still then continued to have some mild cramping, but nothing real serious. So I banished myself to the couch again, said, you know, I'll have labs done again tomorrow and we'll see what the doctor says. Well, um, 
when I went to have my labs drawn on Wednesday, I went down to medical records and got my labs done from the Monday and they had gone from like, my HCG went from like 1500 um, early Saturday morning to over 5,000 on Monday. And then um, I ended up getting a call later in the afternoon on Wednesday saying, oh, your HCG levels are up over 14,000. The doctor says, that's great, carry on. And I said, but I was having some bleeding yesterday. They said, okay come on in and have an ultrasound. So now this is Wednesday the 17th, just one whole week after having found out I was pregnant with our hopefully third baby. And um, I go to the ultrasound at 2.30 in the afternoon and I, then right there I'm having spotting. So I let the ultrasound tech know, hey, this spotting just now started when I got here. Um, when she did her ultrasound, there was blood on the pro when she removed it and the images on the screen um, weren't what you would normally see. And um, she said, since you're concerned and your doctor's not here, I'm going to have another doctor look at this. And so she got uh, the doctor who was on call to take some time to look at it. But because I was being kind of like, you know, made room for, we had to wait a while. So I sent my husband and my children out because, you know, the four of us in a little teeny doctor's office was kind of boring. So they went and played at the local um, McDonald's while they waited for me. And she came back and said that she thought it was a molar pregnancy. That was kind of a frightening thing to hear. She showed me the pictures of the ultrasound that they took then. They weren't able to see the images that had been done even though it was the same hospital system, but this is the doctor's office, not the hospital. Um, she said, you know, we can try and follow up labs, see how they're continuing to go, and you can follow up with your regular provider um, next Thursday. Not the next day, but the next Thursday. And I said, okay, let's do that. She said, but you know, if you have any problems, any further bleeding, um, any pain, any, you know, anything that gives you the inclination that something's not right, then call. I said, okay. Um, perpetual optimist. I'm always thinking, oh, it's twins. This is just, you know, my intro into the twin mom club. There's lots of, you know, early bleeding with that. First trimester bleeding is more common than you think. You know, I spent all that downtime I had on the couch just Googling and searching forums and reading and reading and reading. And so I'm just like, okay, we're just going to check this later and I'm going to take it easy. And she gave me a note to be off work and all oh, that was good. Well, in the car, on the way home, which this is on like the northwest side of town and I live on the southeast side of town. Um, so I had quite a bit of way to get home, like almost, not quite a half an hour. And I started feeling like I was bleeding. And then I started experiencing cramping. And when I got home and got out of the car, I had some pretty severe pain. And I made a beeline to the bathroom where I discovered I was covered in blood, no clots, but a lot of blood and the pain just started coming on. And I thought, this is not normal. <laughs> this isn't what's supposed to be happening right now. So my husband's new in his job and he can't miss work. So I call my mother-in-law and say, please watch the kids. I call my sister and say, I need you to take me to the emergency room. And I call my doctor who I just left the office and said, this is what's going on. And she said, go to the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room. They did more labs. They called in for another ultrasound. And this girl was great. She was able to see, even though it's a different hospital than I work at, it's the same system. And she could see the ultrasound that they had done um, that Saturday morning early. And, um, she could see all this big area of blood and clot and it had grown from 2.25 centimeters to four centimeters. Um, this area that I had thought, um, and let me show you. Okay. Um, let's cover up my name here. So this um, was the ultrasound and this area here that you might think like, oh, this is a baby <laughs> or maybe two. This area in here is all bleeding. And um, this is the doctor's office ultrasound. 
Um, and when I went to the emergency room over here, see how there's two? There was actually like three areas that the ultrasound tech said was um, likely just active bleeding. Something like that maybe you would see with a subchorionic hemorrhage, which was another thing that I was thinking was happening. Um, I might try to put in a screenshot of just a Google image of what a normal, this was a five weeks, five week ultrasound would look like. You would normally see, this is just another um, view, you know, that it would be black, <laughs> like a black space, and then there would be something inside of it. But instead, you see all of this just like stuff, and that's not normal. Um, so she said, you know, at this hospital where I'm going for my second trip to the emergency room, like I haven't been to the emergency room for myself in a very long time. This is so strange to have been going twice in like a week. You know, I was having a lot of pain. I was having a lot of bleeding. And pain and bleeding combined during early pregnancy are not okay. So at this point, they decide that it does seem to correlate and appear to be a molar pregnancy. And that was really scary because molar pregnancies are considered, they're like tumors, they can grow in you. Some people require chemotherapy. Um, not at all like the miscarriage I'd had before. I mean, even my symptoms, nothing was lining up with any kind of pregnancy symptom or miscarriage symptom that I had previously experienced. Nothing was lining up. I mean, I had gone 72 hours with no bleeding <laughs> after that first incident. I went over 24 hours between the bleeding at that appointment on Tuesday to the spotting and then huge gush of blood that I had on Wednesday. Um, but we did decide and determine at that time that um, a DNC was going to be what we needed to do. And so just one week after finding out I was pregnant, I wasn't pregnant anymore. And my kids were devastated. <laughs> they were really looking forward to having a little brother or sister. And it's been hard to kind of adjust to that because I was only really pregnant for a week. <laughs> Obviously, I had symptoms beforehand that um, led me to believe I was pregnant and I had been trying to get pregnant. And even though I've had a loss before, you know, it doesn't change. But our hospital has... Um, a really great program that I've actually um, helped with before. And I take it off when I wash the dishes and it's hard for me to get it back on by myself. But let me show you this. This is called a Hudson's Band of Hope. And these beads here say faith, hope, love, and they have little baby feet. And it's a really pretty bracelet. And other than washing the dishes or taking a shower, I've been wearing it on my white right wrist. Yellow is for moms who um, lose their babies early. And they have pink and blue ones for moms who lose their babies later on. It was started by um, a friend of ours. She's a really good friend of my sister, but I know her. Um, Misty. Uh, during, I believe, her second pregnancy, uh, at almost 20 weeks, she went in for her ultrasound and they discovered that her baby had passed. And she later was, you know, induced and gave birth to Hudson. And she left the hospital with her hospital vans and wore them for about a week or so because that was all she had to show. She had just had a baby. And then her mom gave her a bracelet. And she was inspired that other mothers who lose their babies should also be able to leave the hospital with a reminder of them. And so she created Hudson's Bands of Hope. Excuse me for other grieving mothers to have a piece of something to remember and show and share their baby. And so when I used to go to Mops, um, she shared her story with us and um, she had been given at that time a large um, amount of money for funds to purchase supplies and as a service project we put together hundreds of these um, uh, bracelets and 
it came in a really nice little bag attached to a card that had a stamp with little paw, um, not paw prints, <laughs> little footprints so that the um, hospital people knew, you know, yellow, blue, or pink, depending on the gender of the baby or how far along the mother was. And it shares Misty, um, Misty's story about Hudson and then has a prayer on the back. And then there is also for um, families whose babies are further along and need a place to um, bury their children that there's a local church that has a spot with free burial ground and or if you'd like to purchase a brick to be um, engraved however you'd like to remember your baby and placed in this little sanctuary you can do that too so I thought that that was a really neat um, option and so glad that they shared that with me. And then actually when I went to my follow-up, I had my bracelet on, but the MP, she um, went and was going to give me another one and I showed her, oh look, I see I already have my bracelet. So that's my story about um, my pregnancy and loss here recently. And um, I really just wanted to share because um, the videos that I was watching when I was laid up on the couch, they didn't have the same symptoms as I did. You know, um, there wasn't a video sharing a story quite like mine. And I think everybody's situations are unique, but um, oftentimes there's similarities. And I just want to post this in case there's somebody out there who's having a similar experience where the bleeding stops and starts. And just trust your gut and seek medical attention. Uh, that's what I have to say. Uh, molar pregnancy, I'll, I'll just say that they send out the um, products of conception um, and that appeared to be what it was. The pathology did not um, show signs of actual molar pregnancy, which is very good news. Um, we are monitoring my HCG levels to make sure they go down. I had it checked and it was down, you know, to 415 and then checked again and I don't have those results yet, but they appear to be falling as they should. Um, and then now to hopefully let my body rest a few months and then try again. And hopefully sometime soon, I'll have better news for you guys. Um, so again, I just wanted to share this with other people who may, um, be suffering from a similar type of condition and to know that you know pain and bleeding in early pregnancy are not normal bleeding can sort of be normal but any bleeding anytime you should definitely um, call your OB and discuss your concerns and symptoms with them so thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll get back to the happy things soon bye